Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we are here talking about these guys. This is the Turtle Beach Velocity 1 flight deck and uh, Turtle Beach got it right. They did a really good job. Stick around to find out why. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. All right, you guys. So as we get into this and get started, yes, Turtle Beach provided this to me. And before anyone can start doing the, he was paid. It's, uh, he was giving it to him, so he's going to support it. He loves them all. He's a fan wagon, bandwagon. I want you guys to know that the previous product that they had me review, which was the Velocity One Yoke and Throttle, um, I actually wasn't particularly impressed with, and I stated that in the previous in in my review. Um, my reviews and thoughts, guys, are always my own. I will never accept any um, partnership where I'm required to say X, Y, Z. Doesn't matter what it is. I won't ever do it. I will never endorse something that I would not. Uh, personally use. Um, I want you guys to remember that I come from a history of very low income. Um, I've had to fight my way up to just about everything I've ever earned. So I have experienced buyer's remorse, especially in flight simulation. For example, I would never recommend anything from Logitech anymore. Um, been burned too many times. Um, anyway, so with that in mind, uh, I want you guys to know that the review that I have here for this product, uh, it took me about two days to complete, messing around with it, playing around with it, and I only flew with it once in this video. Um, my first time flying it was in the video here that you guys are about to see, and um, my reactions are genuine. Um, so we're going to go through this in a couple of different uh, steps here. I'm gonna go through the unboxing, we're gonna go through installation, we're gonna go through firmware update, some of the software configurations and hardware configuration options, some of the cool features I like about it, some of the things I don't, and then at the end of the video, we will do a, uh, a recap and final thoughts. I do want you guys to know right up front, this product runs for $3.99 for both the stick and throttle combination. Comes in a single kit, very, very well packaged. Let's start the roll. All right, so now that we've got everything plugged in, let's go ahead and grab the software and make sure that you guys look in the description below if you guys want a direct link to where you need to be. Let me go ahead and make that a little bit smaller for you guys. Oops, didn't mean to click on that. We're gonna scroll down, go to support and downloads, firmware, Turtle Beach One Hanger. Let me turn my filter off there, there you go. And download. It can be downloaded from the Microsoft Store. Let's go. There we go. And just hit get. All right. So now that we have the firmware or firmware, the software download, the first thing we're going to want to do is update the firmware. So we're going to go to flight deck throttle and we're going to go to firmware. And you guys can see we do have one latest release 1.6. We're on 1.1. So we're going to do an update. All right. So with the throttle being done, we'll do the same thing with the flight stick. We'll wait for that to complete. All right, so now that we've got the firmware updated, let's talk about um, the configuration. Now, I wanna give you guys a heads up on a few things. First off, I've already created an example configuration so I can show you guys sort of what it looks like, some of the things that you can do. So let's come up here. I'm gonna show you guys this real quick. You can see here, uh, actually, sorry, that is not mine. Let me load mine. Well, actually, let me still show you. So you guys can create you guys can change all of these buttons. That's a slider. That's a button. Button, button, button. Okay. But now here's the catch with us. It's not doing anything because it's not connected to the sim. Um, but here's the catch with all of this. And here's one of my downsides to this. And here's one of my complaints. Every single one of these is technically a square. There's a square whether it's showing or not. There's a key point. Okay. And essentially what they are are... Try to see if you guys can see that. There you go. 
they're just keyboard commands. These are all corresponding keyboard strokes. So you can see Q, W, E, that's all it's doing on your keyboard is pressing those keys. Now, why is that a problem to me? Here's the reason why. So first off, let's talk about a toggle switch, okay? So you can see this one is W and it's engine one and engine two off. When I depress that, okay, as what I found in my testing so far, let me go ahead and just turn those off. When I flip that up, it presses W, but when I flip it again, for me, it didn't do anything. Okay, it, it doesn't send the command on the downstroke. Now, I don't know if that's just something that maybe I'm doing wrong and I'll have to look into that further. But either way, that's an issue for me and I hope that um, uh, the team over at uh, Turtle Beach and the Velocity One team address that to make them actual virtual two position, three position switches, whatever you happen to have configured, rather than using keyboard assignments. So how it works is page one has a list of keyboard com or uh, letters Page two is a list of letters and page three is numbers. Okay, and that's why you, you can only have three pages on um, in your display configuration. It's still a very neat idea, don't get me wrong, but that means that anytime you go into Microsoft Flight Simulator, DCS World, whatever it may be, whatever button you want to have here, you have to have a corresponding keyboard command inside of the sim. The other thing that I don't like, at least again, as far as I've seen so far, and I've been playing around with it for about a day now, uh, is that there, it doesn't seem to be any way to change what the key binding is, which means you can't add a modifier. So that's another drag for it. Um, I think with, you know, when you have like things like the Verpal software and Thrustmaster's target software, where you can very quickly change what each of the buttons do, add virtual buttons, remove virtual buttons, um, I, I think that they could do this. I think, you know, even something I think VJoy would do something similar. Um, so maybe if they find a way to implement something like that into their software, this would be a game changer across the board. It is still cool. It is still a very nice feature. It still adds way more buttons than what would initially be on this thing. I mean, you've got three pages of configurable buttons, which I'm going to show you guys an example of in just a minute. Um, but I did want you guys to have that heads up. Uh, the other thing that you got to remember is whatever profile you change here does not correspond to your simulator. So you would have to change your simulator to reflect that particular profile. Okay, meaning if, for example, like I said, I think the first page, the first button was W. If W in here is your battery switch, but W in your sim is, I don't know, launching torpedoes, you know, um, you would have to... Uh, make sure that the two keystrokes match because again all this is essentially doing is sending a keyboard command to your sim okay it is, it is a letter stroke it is a keyboard stroke all right it is no different than using this you just don't have to reach for this okay so whatever the sim says that w here does is what that button does here okay i just want to make sure that was clear and again from what i can tell when you press it once and you press it down so the switch goes in the down position from what I have seen in my testing, it doesn't seem to send it on the downstroke. So like if you had toggle battery, um, when I press it going down, it doesn't send the command to the SIM, only when I send that switch going up. Um, and that's maybe where a button will have to come into play. And what that means is that whatever SIM you have has to have the release function. And I will be looking at that. I do believe Microsoft Flight Simulator does have a release function. Uh, so we'll have to look at that, okay? But again, letting you guys know the things ahead of time that I'm, I'm not happy with. So far, I've been really impressed with this. And today is a really good day to do this because they actually just added a profile for um, the Velocity One flight deck in Microsoft Flight Simulator that downloaded this morning. So this is perfect time. I was actually going to do this video last night. I got about halfway through it and then uh, just kept getting distracted. So, I mean, maybe it was just, you know, the, the flight sim gods telling me, hey, wait till tomorrow. So that worked out really nice. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the software so I can show you guys a quick example of how this all works. So let's go to the throttle. Obviously, that's the one that's the key point here. And you can see the commercial profile is loaded. I'm gonna do a real quick one or two button example, you guys showing you how to create your own just so you guys have the understanding of how it works. But we're not gonna go into a full panel. Um, the steps are rinse and repeat from what you guys see here, so watch. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna call this uh, GA electric, or a, yeah, GA single is what I'll call this for MSFS, okay? The picture, you can change your picture load it up, and you can also upload a pic from the PC. I think there are pixel limits though, so watch for that. Preview of the panel. Okay, so this is how the panel currently is. It's obviously blank. We don't want that. So let's go to the panel editor. 
page one, you guys can see the indicating page one up here. And we're going to change this to electrical. Okay, and we're just going to do a couple of options. Let's set over to the commercial one here. You can do space or commercial depending on which one. But notice that the button options change based on which one you're in. So we're going to go with commercial. Um, and again, so adding the button, you simply add it here. To change your text, we're just going to double click it. All right, and you just drag your cursor up. So we would call this battery, right? And you can use tab, the delete key, okay, type on, okay. Uh, but this is the part that I can't seem to work is the off position because, again, it's just a toggle uh, or a trigger. And actually, this is the W key, so this is the Q, I think, is what this one is. So anyway, we got our button created, and you would set up however you wanted, and you could use... The buttons really at the end of the day, guys, are just for picture purposes. You can use any of these and they all operate the exact same way, okay? Everything you do is a trigger of a of a keyboard command, okay? Is what I have found so far, okay? I'm hoping that one day I'm wrong and maybe I'll try to figure that out, but like, oops, like it looks like that takes up two spots. And so you guys can see that it's got two spots. So for example, if we come back in here to the panel editor for a minute, turn our keyboard commands on. Oh, there we go. That is just the D key is what that looks like. So I don't understand how a slider is going to work there when it's a single keyboard stroke. Okay. Uh, so we would probably have to do something like this is what I'm guessing. I don't seem to see how the up and down work. So that part's a little finicky to me. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Again, if we pull up our keyboard commands, that is D and that is I. And I'm pretty sure that I, in this particular situation, oh, you know what? I think it was there. Yes, it is. Okay, yeah, I was right. You can just barely see it. The font needs to be changed on this. I is right there, D is right there. So essentially what you're doing here with the sliders, you're using up two buttons. I for up, D for down. Okay, which is still cool. Okay, it still adds a lot. There's still a neat feature. I don't wanna take away from what they're trying to do here. I'm just thinking of ways that it could be dramatically improved. If they create an option where these are genuinely two uh, virtual buttons, where each one of these is a virtual button that has an on and off position virtually, um, where they are their own keyboard command for example something like this you wouldn't want to use in spad okay in spad.next you wouldn't i mean you would have to assign keyboard commands and that would be a pain in the butt um but if they change this to virtual keys uh where it's you know button 33 and 34 35 and 36 you know etc um the configuration options of this touch screen would be superb absolutely amazing so i hope they figure out a way to do that but so again, you've got your getting back on track here. You would set whatever buttons you want. Now, the real cool part is if you decide you want to rearrange something, you can take this battery button here that's already configured. Let's say we wanted to move it down here. And notice you don't lose any of your contextual uh, assignments. Now, if I toss it out and, re and bring it back in, well, now we have to start all over again. Okay, so again, let's bring that up for just a minute. And uh, just sort of put something in. We'll just do it again. Oop, wow, learn how to type, buddy. We'll just reset it up just like that. Oops. <laughs> you can tell I'm thinking about testing, right? All right. So that's good enough. You guys get the idea for there. All right. Now, if you want to set up your lighting on your... Now, this is just for the throttles. The other cool part, this is very independent. Let's say we want this profile to have the white backlighting for the throttle. All right. So now we've got the GA MSFS. Okay. So we've got that. So we're going to hit save again. There is our new profile. We can simply click it once. It comes across. Notice this all changed. And hopefully you guys can see that. Let me bring the screen up a bit more. There you go. So now we have our button. This one, obviously, we didn't assign to anything. You can see the animation does work on the scroll wheel. I don't know if that's coming across the screen real well. But so there you go. We've created our own profile. You can have up to three different pages and title them however you'd like. Again, the drag about that is, is that whatever assignment you have here, you got to make sure it also exists in whatever game or sim you're playing. And then to change your profile back, we would just come back up here, give it one left click, and it's back to the way it was. And the behavior is the exact same for the flight stick. Now let's talk about something that's pretty cool about the flight stick. So we're going to go over here, 
And again, the exact same thing exists. However you guys want to do it, you want to create a new one, whatever you want to do. We could trash this one, and if you want to bring it back, it's very simple to do. Okay, you just hit copy. Okay, and then again, you could bring it in port. We already talked about the hardware testing, okay? Oh, no, we actually, I don't think we did talk about hardware testing. The hardware test field, okay, is exactly what it sounds like. You can simply manipulate all the controls that exists on the throttle too, on the flight deck, okay? You guys can ch set up all the bindings, etc. And same thing with your profiles, by the way. Let's talk about that. Let's come in here. And I'm actually going to show you an example here on the flight stick. So we're going to go into configs. Let's do a new one here. And uh, once again, let's just uh, bring this guy in. There we go. There it is. All right. And again, we're just going to call this one MSFS for right now because we're going to leave it as is. Panel editor, just like we talked about before. Same kind of thing. You can change what you want it to do. Um, chronometer and axis, I guess, kind of works for me. And it just sets the different axis and which one you want it to monitor. I think by default, it is this mouse wheel here that's underneath the thumb. Now, let's talk about this guy right here. This part's pretty cool. So let's go to hardware settings over here. Um, you guys can see the different curve options that you can set automatically to it. You can also lock the rudder, which is a nice thing. So if you have your own rudder pedals and you, or you don't want the twist grip to do anything, you can simply hit rock rudder, rock rudder, <laughs> nice, lock rudder. And inside the sim, the Z axis won't do anything, okay? Um, but we want to check that out today. So trackpad, this is the one I wanted to show you guys. This thing has a built-in mouse. And it's a little interesting, but so let me show you. It's this orange switch right here, the same one that you're seeing here on the screen, this guy. If we flip it to the up position, when I move my thumb across the touchpad, I can activate the mouse. But like if I want to go to, say, thumb wheel, it's very difficult. So what I have found is if we take that sensitivity, move it down to about 50%. It's going to slow it down quite a bit. But going into hardware settings again, you can also adjust what the thumb wheel does, whether it's digital buttons or axis. You can change the haptic feedback on it. It's got the pro aim uh, configuration if you want to adjust that. But the biggest thing I want to show you guys was the mouse. So let's go ahead and go back to our profile. We've saved our profile. Now let's load our profile. Okay. And so now I'm going to, with that switch flipped up, It's a little bit easier to manipulate. I hope in the future that we do see a little bit better tracking from the thumb, but that's still a neat idea. I really like the idea of that. And to turn it off, you just flip the switch down and boom. Now it doesn't do anything, okay? So really slick features, you guys. All in all, I don't wanna go into too much more detail on this portion of this. I wanna get into the sim and fly it and see how it handles. Again, this is the first time for me as well. You guys are seeing all of this for the first time. Um, but I, I really like where they are going with it. And I stand by the title of this video that uh, Turtle Beach did it right and Velocity One got it right. Um, sorry about that, I had to cough. Um, it's got all the right features. It's got nice weight to it. It's innovative. Uh, the configuration options are nice. This is my biggest gripe so far is just I feel like the touchscreen could offer so much more and I don't feel like it would be too big of an overhaul to change the way that this works. So I really hope that you guys at uh, Turtle Beach take my advice on that and look into that because it would, it would truly make this thing a game changer and add a lot of value to this. However, at the price point of $3.99 so far, you guys, I am okay with it. The only other thing that I actually will say, there's one more thing that I want to talk about, is right off the bat, before we've even flown, is this wheel right here on the thumb. Um, if I just go like this, it doesn't move. And I actually don't like that. You actually have to push pretty hard in order to get it to go. Now, it's not bad. It's not awful. It's not bending it. It's not in danger of breaking anything. But it would be nice if this was more like... Um, not recessed, but protruding out and had your grip on top where you could just take your thumb and do this. But I mean, you have to push still quite a bit. It would be nice to just be able to do this. And the reason why I say that is it would be nice for fi fine tuning. Like if you're doing radar elevation, um, I think it would be a little bit easier if it wasn't 
didn't require as much pressure to make it move. I like the textured, the wheel on it. That part is still very nice. Um, but just again, minor gripe, nothing crazy. Um, and I will say that so far, everything that I've experienced thus far without flying it yet, um, they're minor gripes. They're, they're very minuscule in comparison to what they could be. So last step here, let's go ahead and jump into uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and we're gonna check out what the new default profile is. Um, so in order to do that, what I'm first going to do um, is I'm gonna set this back to the default. Okay, so we're gonna go to the basic. We're gonna copy that up. Now I'm gonna throw that in there. Actually, let's go to the, com ah, I don't know what we should use. Let's do the commercial. Because I know there's a pri profile. Again, I saw it this morning. There is a profile in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Saw it this morning. Um, so let's take a look at what that is. So let's throw that back in here. Oh, I have to hit the copy button. Uh, I do want to edit because I actually want to be able to test that mouse. So let's go to hardware settings. Let's do our trackpad. Let's bring that down again to 50%. Go save, save, and load. Cool. All right. So I'm going to launch the sim now, guys, and we will see how it all works out. All right. So we are now in our trusty Mooney. And we're going to take her up for a flight. Seeing it's requiring very little input on the Z-axis to control the rudders, which is nice. Allows you to control it finely. Key bind worked automatically for the gear handle. Okay, that's because I was moving the camera around. Gosh darn it, I hate that Microsoft does this. All right, now let's just fly. So I was a little worried initially with the uh, spring and the uh, neck being so small on this, the base, the center of gravity being so low, I was worried that the spring was going to cause problems with finite movement. But it seems to actually be really nice. I'm actually very impressed. And the thumb wheel is our trim. It's actually really nice. Like I said, they they got it right. I mean, I am very easily controlling the aircraft with minimal input, as you guys are seeing on the stick. And if we go full bore here, whoa, okay. <laughs> it definitely works. <laughs> very nice. Very good handling. Very responsive. Very smooth. Nice texturing. Nice feel on the grip. I love the sort of rubber plaited grip. I don't know what you'd call this here. Um, but... Uh, 
they've done a very, very good job with this one. This is very nice. All right, so let's go into uh, final thoughts here, guys. Let's just talk about final thoughts at this point. All right, guys, so now let's get into the final thoughts now that we've gotten a chance to take a look at everything and experience it in hand. Um, I've used so many different pieces of hardware. Um, first off, let's make sure that we get the comparison correctly. Uh, this would be compared to, say, something um, obviously above something like the Microsoft 3D Extreme, definitely above that. Its price range would be more comparable to that of, say, the Logitech X56, etc. I don't think they are as expensive as this unit is. I still would not put this in the market with, say, the Thrustmaster Warthog. But, however, uh, any of the lower... Um, tier, if you will, the lower tier Thrustmaster products, I would compare it up against. Um, I would not compare this to Verpal or VKB. Um, the v Verpal and VKB are way beyond it or FB Sim. Um, they, they surpass it by quite a bit. And again, so does the price point, right? Uh, where this is a $400 uh, set, uh, just the, thr the Verpal throttle is just shy of $400. So keep that in mind. So don't compare it to anything like that. This is definitely um, your uh, first time buyer's kit. Um, if you are someone who isn't looking to get the latest and greatest and the best and the most high quality, this is but something that's functional and good. This is definitely up there. My complaints about it, you guys already have heard it, is definitely I think the biggest one is here on the touchpad. It, that's my biggest complaint. Um, I think that this could be done better in the aspect of not using keyboard strokes. Um, to the guys, again, as I've already stated in the video over at Turtle Beach, I really hope you find a different way to do this because it would drastically open up configuration options if the firmware on the board recognized all the touchscreen quadrants or sections, excuse me, as virtual buttons that have two positions on them. Okay, where you have button, like I said, like I was using earlier, say it would be, I don't know, 40 and 41, 42 and 43, 44. If you can set that up to where it does that and where other softwares will recognize them as buttons, you could even still keep the three page limitation. Uh, but if you can figure out how to do that, man, it would drastically um, enhance this for its price. The other thing, like I said earlier, uh, I, I would like to see this wheel be able to move a little bit smoother. Like even there, my finger, it's moving, but my finger is also dragging off of it at the end. Uh, so I would like to see that changed. Um, the throttle lock is a little weird. It's a depress and release. I don't know if I showed that. Okay. Um, so there's a button there. Oh, there's a, sorry, I should probably bring that up. So there's the knob I was referring to. And then the push release is right here. So it's push it. And it separates them. Gotta find the, find the, there we go, push it again, and it locks them in. I think I'd rather just have what a lot of throttles do, which is just the, the slider here where you just flick it with your finger and break them free. I had to make sure I was pointing at the right spot. Um, but uh, outside of that, outside of that, uh, I like that there are buttons here and here, but sort of like what they did here, for example. At the detent point, there are virtual buttons that in the software you can move their position. And when they strike, when the access strikes those virtual buttons, it creates a haptic feedback. So rather than having a physical de detent, you've got a virtual detent with haptic feedback when you strike them. So for like your Airbus, it would you go back and your cutoff goes burnt. You can bring it up to your flight idle, burnt, you know, it'll vibrate with you. And so if, if they can create that same kind of virtual button down here where it's just a solid button, not a keyboard stroke, again, telling you, much better way to do this, much better way to do it. Um, and it would make it configurable in something like SPAD.next, which for those of you who don't know, SPAD.next is a huge uh, advantage, same thing with Axes and O's because it allows the use of LVARs and uh, hidden controls that aren't necessarily in the Microsoft Flight Sim GUI. Um, the profile configurator and the software I think is very, very easy to use. I love the way that it is designed. Again, feature rich, customizable, um, end user friendly, newbie friendly. Um, on the flight stick, even though it wasn't near the problem that I thought it was going to be, I would still like to see this distance here uh, extended a little bit because the center of gravity is still low enough where like, like right there, you, can, you, you really kind of got to get it moving. And there's a lot of tension where if you had the stick up here, that leverage point would be much more balanced and you'd be able to make those. See, like if I want to just make a finite movement, you really got to kind of push it. 
And it was very similar with the Thrustmaster Warthog when I first got mine. That's the whole reason why I'm sure a lot of us got the extension on it was because that spring was so strong. The tension on it was so powerful that, like, if you, uh, example would be air-to-air -air refueling, you know, where your movements need to be very, very small. Uh, in here, I could see, like, if you don't set that curvature just right in DCS, I could see where that would be... Uh, where that would be another another fighting point. And it was the same thing when we were flying DCS with the Thrustmaster Wardog before we got the extension. Air-to-air -air refueling, close flight formation was really hard to maintain because you needed so much pressure to get out of that center position uh, that you always ended up putting uh, uh, more input than what you really wanted to do. So those are really, guys, and, and I had to reach for that. Those are my biggest complaints about these. They feel nice. Uh, the quality is great. The the rubber texture. I don't know how well you guys can see that on camera, but that the grip is really nice. It's smooth, but yet when you grab it, it's nice. The number of buttons and features and positions that are available. I mean, the configuration options on this. I'll still say, regardless of the touch screen, the configuration options on this are very very extensive. Uh, I do believe at the time this is PC only right now, um, and which is a shame i'm not an xbox flyer but uh for xbox users um, hopefully this will come down the path because this is definitely something that would be uh appreciated on the xbox um but uh anyways that is my first impressions first review of the velocity one flight deck um and i'm gonna stand by my initial statement they got it right even with my complaints they got it right for the price point the features the configuration options the software its ease of use the texturing the feel the finite control the sensitivity that it has it it's got all the right things in all the right places. It's very innovative with the, the mouse touchpad. I know that's not a huge thing probably to a lot of us, um, but it I could see I could see its use, especially in Microsoft Flight Simulator, constantly dealing with the reaching down for the mouse. If they can if they can dial that touchpad in, and, and I still have to play with it more. If we can really dial that in, that could be really handy for adjusting things like when you're flying and turning off your autopilot, yaw damper, without ever taking your hands off the controls. I could see it being pretty cool. So, anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think of the Velocity One flight deck to Turtle Beach. Thank you very much for sending me this review copy. I am very, very grateful for it and very pleased with what you have done here. I hope that uh, my feedback comes back as effective and positive. Um, I think you guys have put out a wonderful product here that is on the right road to being something really, really amazing. Like I said, if you can dial in that touchpad or the touchscreen, it'll be, it'll be a, a grand slam. All right. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe and healthy. See you in the next one.